Hey everyone, it's me, respectful, politeness, understanding, I'm sorry, say I'm sorry, right now. I guess it's my turn to choose a card, let's see, hmm, what's really going on and don't hug me I'm scared. Yes, if only there was some way to learn more information about this. I'm a computer. I'm a computer guy. I got some theories in line that just might blow your mind. Oh! Oh, if you notice that if the computer can actually do that, that's quite high tech if you think about it. Hmm. Oh, small computer. Hello Internet! Welcome to Film Theory Where Oh my gosh! It's like Inception or... <gasps> wow! The Matrix! <sighs> we watch our internet videos a quarter frame at a time. You think I'm joking, but when it comes to Don't Hug Me I'm Scared, it's pretty accurate. These videos are so densely packed with detail and symbolism that you can watch them over and over and over again and still come up with new easter eggs you've never seen before. Oh, Just look at this one scene at the end of the third episode of Don't Hug Me. The first time you watch, you might see Roy, Yellow Guy's dad, standing there while his son is indoctrinated into the cult of Malcolm. Keep looking and you'll notice the notepad and clock from the prior two episodes standing there behind him dressed in white robes. Keep searching and you see Red Guy and Duck there too, when they're supposed to be at their delicious chicken picnic, unaware of where Yellow Guy even is. Or how about here in episode 5 when Duck quits the show, there are a few frames of Red Guy's spaghetti head in the microwave and a few frames later, his legs where the meat man was standing just seconds before. And it isn't just limited to the videos. At the end of episode 5 we see Red Guy leaving a phone booth. Google search for the phone number on that phone booth and you find this hidden video. The log is in the beer. So are those duck boats the smoking gun that decode everything that's going on in this series? No. No, they aren't. But you can bet I took it all into account in my creation of today's theory. Because last time we covered the easy stuff, the symbolism of the story and how it represents a children's television show corrupted by the influence of advertising. But today, instead of looking at what Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared means in our world, we're going to explain what it means in its own world. Who are these characters? What is the deal with all these Easter eggs? And how should we be interpreting the ending? Is it even an ending at all? I've got the answers all here for you and by the end of this video, I guarantee to have you digital dancing. Now, as I hmm, um, what do you mean by digital dancing? <sighs> okay. Watched and rewatched the series. Even though Red Guy, Yellow Guy, and Duck are the ones who appear on camera most often, these videos seem to have two main characters: Red Guy, yes, and Roy. Yellow Guy's porn surfing father. And that's reinforced in episode 6, where the whole ending sequence of events revolves around the relationship between these two. But who are they? Additionally, in a series full of bizarre moments, two events seem to be the most game changing Red Guy's literal mind blow at the end of the computer episode, and the dramatic shift to real life in the middle of episode 6. It was my theory that if we could somehow answer who those two characters are and what those two events stood for, then this whole enigma ball would unravel. So I started with the guy that we have the most information about, Red Guy. Now, as we established last time, Don't Hug Me depicts a television show with Red Guy, Yellow Guy, and Duck as performers on the series. Oh, there you are. We've been looking for you all afternoon. Don't get me wrong, I didn't say that they're good performers, but they are performers nonetheless. In addition to all the camera and set imagery we discussed last time, there are multiple instances where things don't go as planned, and Red Guy literally breaks the fourth wall to address what seems like someone behind the camera. The first instance of this occurs in episode 2 when the clock begins to talk. Red Guy turns to the camera, genuinely confused, saying quietly, then again, at the beginning of episode 4, the red guy delivers his setup. If only there was a way to learn more about the world. Then hmm, that is kind of suspicious. I mean, I will see Deadpool saying those words, but not him. Hmm. 
and strongly indicates towards the globe. Even the music cue follows him. Duck then joins in, trying to cue the reveal of the globe, but both are genuinely caught off guard by the computer coming to life. Apparently a change in the script that neither were made aware of. It's made especially clear that Red Guy wasn't in on this change when he reveals that they already had another computer, a cute laptop, but is once again cut off before he can get through his thoughts. From there, Red Guy tries to shut the computer up by saying things like, Wait a second. What's your favorite color? Stop talking. Do you like Be quiet. Do you have before touching the computer and causing it to freak out. So clearly, Red Guy is both unaware of and very displeased by these unexpected changes. So yes, and this sort of thing is really unwonderful if you have just communicated beforehand. So. Please be understanding, please be respectful, and please be polite about it. Be friendly and cheerful to one, towards one another. Spread the wholesomeness. So then, who is he? Well, that answer comes to us in the final episode, Dreams. It starts with Yellow Guy left alone learning about dreams from the lamp, but quickly transitions to Red Guy IRL at a desk job and singing the creativity song at a karaoke bar to receive, let's just say, less than stellar reviews. Now, most other theories see this as occurring in the present day, but what makes more sense is that this scene is actually a flashback to the Red Guy's life before the show. When he was working at a boring desk job and had dreams of making a children's television program. I mean, look at the way he pitches the idea of the singing file to his boss, something that becomes physically manifested later in the video. More on that in a minute. But truly, despite the monotone voice, this guy is a guy with dreams. Dreams that sometimes seem like they're getting drowned in a pool of oil or booed off stage with all the enthusiasm of a YouTube comment section. But within that sea of bored disapproval, one person watching the red guy's performance wasn't booing. Roy. And it's here that we finally learn of the secret to their relationship. Roy discovered Red Guy at an open mic night and made him a deal to sponsor the kids show that Red Guy had always wanted. But then, how do we know that Roy is the sponsor? It's easy. We're expressly told it in the credits. Episodes 2 through 6 of DHMIS end with a special thank you to all the Kickstarter backers. And the last person thanked in every episode is Roy. And Roy. Because he too is a financial backer. In fact, within the lore of the series, he's the main backer. A sponsor with greedy motives who gets out of hand once Red Guy is out of the picture in episode 5. We see very clearly in the healthy eating episode that Roy sells food products. His name is littered everywhere. But more specifically, notice the foods his name is on. Roy's flour, Roy's health juice, Roy's oats, and Roy's flakes. Most of these are grain-based. Now compare that to what the meat in the can are teaching the children as healthy. All foods that are grain or dairy based. And also aspic. But this theme of questionable health benefits behind plain foods doesn't stop there. It also appears in a bizarre interview the characters did with the British website It's Nice That in May of 2016. In it, Red Guy says that he's trying an all plain foods diet and that it's causing some disturbing side effects. Wonder if his teeth are turning gray. In fact, Roy's role as a food producer can even tie in with the overalls that he and his son wear. And this isn't the first time that we've seen some product placement in these episodes. In episode 4, the computer prints out a picture of oat cereal and then also shows them a picture of the same cereal in the newspaper. If you look really closely, you can even see the oats digital dancing. Considering the theory that Red Guy is the creator and Roy is the sponsor, this product placement was probably a big point of contention. But Why is there so much product placement involved? That's okay. With Red Guy no longer on the show as of episode 5, Roy was free to fill the video with as many products and skewed health messages as he wanted to, turning it from being educational to being one big commercial. You can even see it happen. If you check out the final moments of episode 4, frame by frame, you see both Duck and Yellow Guy glitch into the picture. But look closely and you'll see that their brains are exposed, a sign that they've been brainwashed by the computer. So if Roy's the sponsor, then what's the deal with Yellow Guy calling him his dad? Well, he's not lying. As sponsor of the show, Roy can make sure that his son is put into the spotlight. This would explain why Yellow Guy is clearly the most inexperienced of the three on camera. But still get the spotlight. Don't think for a second that Roy is some stage mom trying to get his son famous. Quite the contrary. Going back to that It's Nice That interview, we actually hear Roy speak for the only time ever throughout the entire series. When asked if he had anything to say, he responds with the following. My silly boy has allowed his eyes to grow arrogant and rude. For this, I will take him on a trip to Punish Land. Yikes, Punish Land. Something tells me this isn't Disney World's latest park extension. But when you look at the series, it actually makes 
a lot of sense. Yellow Guy has been the victim from the very beginning. In episode 1, his painting is destroyed and he's told that his favorite color isn't creative. In episode 2, the clock yells at him until his ears bleed. In episode 3, he's nearly seduced into joining a cult. In episode 4, he gets brainwashed by the computer. In episode 5, he pulls a Scott Tennerman and eats his friend. And then in episode 6, is tortured by an unending barrage of inane lessons. Oh yeah, and also drowns in oil. But if you think Roy's punish land stops there, well, boy howdy, you are wrong. Observant viewers will spot horses sprinkled all over DHMIS videos. Pictures of horses, rocking horses, horse figurines, animated horses. Well, in the same interview with It's Nice That, it's revealed that Yellow Guy is scared of horses. He's also apparently allergic to eggs, wasps, crabs, meat, and trees, all of which are elements that we see worked into various episodes throughout the series. Roy's not only sponsoring the series to push his own goods, he's also doing it to push his son to the brink of insanity. Even Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared's most famous Easter egg fits in with the idea of Roy teaching Yellow Guy a lesson. No, you teaching a... If you want your son to overcome that, teach it in a more proper and appropriate way. Doing all this forcefully do 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 without actually think, uh, teaching the pros and cons of it is just bad parenting. The unchanging date of June 19th has bothered would-be theorists since the second episode, but we have our answer right now. June 19th, 1955, the date which we see hinted at over and over again throughout the series, was Father's Day. In 2011, when the first episode of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared was released, Father's Day was also on June 19th. And Wow! Wow! I didn't see that coming. This year, the date of release for the very last episode was June 19th, which lo and behold was once again Father's Day. Roy is punishing his son for letting his eyes grow arrogant and rude. Maybe something about catching his dad watching porn. But regardless, he forces him to respect his authority by making every day Father's Day. A constant reminder of who is in charge. As long as the date is June 19th, Yellow Guy is doomed to suffer this torture with no end in sight. Or at least that's what would have happened if not for Red Guy. Which means it's finally time to talk about the ending. At the end of episode 4, Red Guy resists being lured into Roy's computer world, leaving the living room set with Roy hidden in the corner and instead noticing that the computer is hooked up to a mysterious red cable leading to the next room. When he opens the door, it's revealed that he's covered in motion tracking balls, and discovers a super low-tech version of episode 1 being recorded. Then his head explodes. So what does all this mean? Well, the head explosion is definitely a literal version of Red Guy's mind being blown, but what exactly blew his mind in the first place? Many have said it's him realizing that he's on a TV show, but as we've seen already, both he and Duck break the fourth wall repeatedly, meaning they know they're on camera. Instead, I think the revelation is a lot more positive. Notice that he follows a red cable hooked up to the computer, and that he's leaving Roy's room. A room, mind you, with higher production value, filled with props and motion capture ability, only to find himself in a room with a crude set and props. Red Guy's mind blow in this moment is that he doesn't need the dominating presence of Roy. That he can create his series on a low budget and load it directly onto the computer, i.e. a place like YouTube, without needing a bunch of money. Remember, episode 4 is all about what you can do on a computer. According to Roy, it's all superficial consumerism things. Charts, digital style, dancing, but here, Red Guy sees a video being filmed and uploaded directly to a computer. And again, based on what we discussed last video, this is similar to the journey the creators of DHMIS took to keep their series independent. So, Red Guy leaves Roy's series, and then in episode 5, we repeatedly see imagery of him on the outside looking in. He's looking at the series from a new outsider's perspective. Those foreboding phone calls for Duck throughout the episode are coming from him. We see him exiting a phone booth at the end of the episode for crying out loud. It's him calling his friend to let them know that there's another option, that they can and need to escape to stop selling their souls to Roy. Duck answers and tries to get away, but as we see, is captured, canned, and consumed. But is Duck getting eaten literal? It's hard to say. Seems like it shouldn't be, right? But then again, Roy is a farmer, and Duck is the only character who happens to be an animal. Huh. The can consuming the duck could be the duck getting canned. Huh. All of this comes to a head in episode 6. Yep. Alright, so, um, keep it family friendly, keep it wholesome. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Hello guys, the last one standing on the show, held there by his father. Once the episode gets underway, we see the origins of the series, with Red Guy being discovered by Roy at karaoke. We then cut to Red Guy discovering, for lack of a better term, the show machine, which creates the characters and situations that we've seen throughout the previous five episodes. Now mind you, none of this is literal. Show machine, why not just quit a studio? <laughs> It's all meant to be symbolic. This is Red Guy coming to grips with the show he created and seeing for the first time ever with clear eyes the effect it's having on kids like Yellow Guy. Roy discovers Red Guy trying to shut down the machine and reaches his hand out to touch the Red Guy on the shoulder. It's not a gesture of aggression, it's more like a peace offering, an invitation to come back and work for the show once again. Because face it, what else does Red Guy have? In a society full of negativity towards his ideas, Roy was the only one willing to take a chance on him. And you see, that that's the brilliance of episode 6 here. It starts by addressing typical dreams, the ones that happen at night, but when you look again, it's actually about personal dreams, and how seeing a dream achieved, like Red Guy finally creating the show he always wanted, can turn into a waking nightmare. But it's at that moment that Red Guy decides to literally, and figuratively, pull the plug on both the show and his relationship with Roy, eager to see what will happen next. And it works. We restart the series, but with some very important differences. All the characters are now the color they said was their favorite in episode 1, blue, red, and green. The date on the calendar changes from June 19th to June 20th, meaning that it's no longer Father's Day and Roy has no influence on the show anymore. It is quite literally the start of a new day. And that also makes sense when you look at the sets. At the beginning of episode 1, the kitchen is full of props like knives and plates and books and a telephone. But the reset version at the end of episode 6 is very simple, with just a table and a few other items. Without Roy's sponsorship, they're working on a smaller budget, but the characters are finally free. The notepad flips open and the first episode begins again, but this time it's on their own terms. This time green will be a creative color. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. <sighs> wow. <sighs> very motivational, very inspirational. Encouraging. At least that's my interpretation, and at the heart of it, Don't Hug Me I'm Scared is all about creativity and interpretation. I've seen other theories that are way different from this one that I've laid out for you, but they all still deserve your respect and attention. After all, when asked by the UK news site Metro about fan theories for Don't Hug Me I'm Scared, co-creator Becky Sloan said, Quote, We've read a lot of theories online about what it all means, and they are all correct. So go watch the show again. Look for your own Easter eggs. Come up with your own theory and leave it in the comments below. There's only one rule though, guys. Be creative. And with that, we leave behind DHMIS. As we close the book on this two-parter, I gotta ask, of the six episodes of Don't Hug Me, which was your favorite one? Creativity? Time? Love? Computers? Healthy eating? Or dreams? Click on one to choose. I'm really curious which one you responded to most. I'm a toss-up between creativity and computers. The loved one is good too. I'm just glad to be done with this. I've been watching these videos over and over and over again and most of the time it's at like midnight or one in the morning. These are not things that you want to watch a bunch of times before you go to bed. Trust me. No really. Trust me. Anyway, click on one to choose and cast your vote. Can't wait to see what the results are. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going through some superhero withdrawals. Or should I say super villain withdrawals. Well, if it's me, I would choose um, ghosts instead of dreams, because dreams can just be dreams. But goals, you take steps by step by step to achieve your goal. So awesome. Well, anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you find this video very um, special and unique to watch. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have any share of us. Don't forget to follow my channel and I sincerely appreciate all the support and encouragement for my work. Thank you so much and I hope to see you in my next video. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory and cut. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye! Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much. You're the best!